it's Vitality and today I would like to continue our series of videos about chord melodies and talk about chord melody of a beautiful song by Bobby Hap, Sunny. Uh, in my opinion it's a kind of poppy tune, well it's not too straight ahead jazzy uh, song but it's still fine to do because um, and that song uh, it's a pretty uh, nice uh, combination of two very common modes to be mixed together is Phrygian and Aeolian. So let's uh, talk about harmony first. Uh, in my opinion that song consists of three parts, A1 part, A2 part and B part. A1 and A2 parts they are exactly the same. So let's learn one and we know another automatically. We've got A minor 7th chord that go into a G minor 7th chord. We've got C 9th chord, it's dominant 7 with the 9th degree on top. Uh, we've got F major 7, but I use here C form, starting on the root on the 5th string. Uh, and we've got here nothing else, it's just a standard turnaround 2, 5, 1, to A minor. We've got B minor 7 flat 5, E ultra dominant, I do a flat 9 here, A minor chord. So that is our A part, so A1 part or A2 part. B part will be just a little bit different, we've got one extra chord here. The beginning of the part will be the same as the A part, will be A minor 7th chord going to a G minor 7th. Next will be C9 chord, F major 7th, and here we go to a B flat, I play 7th 13, and after that result to just a regular B, down, B flat dominant 7th. And now we've got our turnaround again, 2, which is B minor 7th flat 5, Go to E ultra dominant, dominant 7 flat 9, go to A minor 7, and I insert a dominant chord at the very end, E ultra dominant. Well, this is entire harmony. As far as you already know that, you know the entire tune. And pretty much all those chord voicings pretty nice for putting melody on top because melody is uh, quite a bit simple. It's just a part of hexatonic scale because uh, as far as this uh, song is the mixture of uh, Phrygian and uh, Aeolian scales, A Phrygian and A Aeolian scales, uh, we actually in the melody avoid uh, second degrees uh, of both of those modes, make sure that it never cluster to our chord progression. So we've got always flat third, we've got a root, we've got flat seven, we've got flat six, we've got five, and also we use for sure our fourth degree and flat third again. So uh, let me talk about first half of the melody. First half of the melody very simple like that. Now uh, second half of the melody will be exactly the same, so uh, that what I just played was part A, so A1 and A2. B part will be just a little bit different, it starts from repetitive lick. And after that we just kind of round that leg up. That's it. So uh, the melody is pretty uh, simple, it's just a part of the scale and repetitive leg and nothing else. Well, uh, and the chord melody actually it's not complicated too because pretty much what I did, I play straight ahead all chords and put melody on top. I not reharmonize, I not uh, insert any extra chords, um, I don't do any kind of substitutions pretty much at all. I create that uh, chord melody on one of my gigs when I start to play an intro before a vocalist play, uh, sings the melody and actually I just memorized it and put on paper and right now uh, just to share with you guys. So um, I guess I would like to talk about a few more things. Well, first thing that I would like to talk is a model thinking. Uh, in that song, as I already talked, um, we have two modes over A root. We have A Phrygian and A Aeolian. In my uh, way to think about mods, I never think about mods as a uh, scales that were created from some parent minor or natural major scales. For example, if we think about A Phrygian here, uh, technically uh, it's all the same notes as we have in the D natural minor scale or D Aeolian mode, right? 
So over A root. Well, uh, technically it's possible, but I still prefer to think about that as a uh, song that's written in the Phrygian. So it's uh, Phrygian over A, and we have one flat two flat three four five flat six flat seven one, right? So it's very kind of cool uh, and melodic mode. And the second half for sure written in just A Aeolian scale, A natural minor scale. We have one natural two flat three four five flat six flat seven one, right? And um, why I do not prefer to use uh, parent modes or uh, think about a Phrygian as a D natural minor scale. Because here, over our melody, I use some of the blues notes. And if I think about uh, E minor scale over A, uh, and I think, well, uh, let's add some blues notes, the blues notes I will add is probably will be over D as a root. And over D, our blues note flat 5 will be A flat or G sharp. Right? It's a triton over D, but over A it'll be major 7th, which is not the best interval to add as an even passing tone that going down, because that uh, tone wants to re resolve to half a half step to our root, right, to our octave. Well, uh, this is why I think here about a uh, Phrygian mode, but with added flat fifth degree. So it's a Phrygian blues, you may call it this way. So we have one flat two, flat three, four, flat five, five, flat six, flat seven, one. We've got that chromatic passing uh, turnaround here, right? Which is pretty nice because I use here, uh, I use that uh, in our uh, motion from uh, E note to a D, right? Right, so it's, it's pretty nice. It just adds kind of like a bluesiness to our song. And actually, uh, it's pretty nice to add it in any kind of way. So it's, it's very nice and melodic motion, but that won't be possible if I will think about a Phrygian as about D natural minor, because I will use completely different note as a blues tone and that not won't work over A minor chord pretty good. So this is why I guess my way will make sense right here to think about every mode as it is and not as any other scale. Uh, so here uh, when we play that blues it's actually a pretty cool phrase. Uh, if we do the same thing but we play um, that uh, phrase over uh, D minor chord, because we'll think the D Aeolian scale is nothing else as a A Phrygian, it'll be a completely different sound. It'll be... It doesn't work too good with our A. No, no. See, it sounds more like that phrase where in a different key and it just resolves back to A. It sounds to me like, well, we can create some minor blues from that will be Dorian actually, but... Uh... that uh, phrase definitely works and if we use uh, the flat 5 over D it sounds like we should go to a D minor chord because always flat 5 shows that uh, tension that bluesy note and we always know it's just a flat 5 it's not not close to the root of the chord so this is why um, I just want to mention that model way to think about chords and modes and uh, model way to think about melodies that may help you with arranging some stuff well, let's talk about the next subject. One more thing I would like to talk about to explain a little diminished run uh, I have at the end of a chord melody, it's Phrygian dominant scale. Well, it's pretty common mode to use over ultra dominant chord that resolves as a 5 chord to minor 1 chord. In the song we've got that turnaround, we've got E ultra dominant, I use dominant 7 flat 9 resolves to A minor 7th chord. Well, uh, here we can use E Phrygian dominant scale. Technically, that scale will be nothing else as a A harmonic minor scale, which is 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 6, 7, 1. Right? 
but uh, I would prefer to think about that scale when we play over ultra dominant chord as a Phrygian dominant scale. Uh, why? I will explain right now. First, I will think that that scale starts right now not from A note, it starts from E. So right now we've got one flat two, three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, a little bit better over E chord because when we start to think about that well it's nothing else as an E ultra dominant chord so we have uh, just a dominant arpeggio here with a flat 9 with a natural 4 and with a flat 6 that we may call a sharp 5 that scale will work a little bit better if we start to accent right and uh, embellish the right chord degrees well, another thing we can create from it, it's a diminished chord. If we harmonize harmonic minor scale, on a 7th degree of harmonic minor scale we've got a fully diminished chord. In a A harmonic minor it will be nothing else as a G sharp fully diminished, right? So we can start to play right here. But now we can look on that chord and figure, well, it's nothing else as a diminished chord from 3rd degree of our E altered dominant chord. So, can we play that chord over E note as a bass? Sure, yes. Now, as far as we know, the diminished chords has inversions in minor thirds. It doesn't matter where you go up or down, we may do the same thing. We may play all the inversions over our E note as a bass. We've got here our G sharp fully diminished chord. We've got F fully diminished chord. We've got D fully diminished chord. And we've got B fully diminished chord. So what we have here... It's pretty nice, right? So instead of one ultra dominant chord, we can play five chords. One ultra dominant chord and four fully diminished chords. And in relation to E, that will be a third degree, G sharp. It'll be a half step up, or I prefer to call that flat nine degree, will be F note, will be flat seventh degree, D note, and will be B or fifth degree. Now, we also can create some interesting thing here. Uh, if we uh, think about our E ultra dominant chord, and uh, we are, as jazz players, can uh, substitute that chord not only with the diminished, we can substitute the ultra dominant chord with another dominant chord. And two possible substitutions will be a tritone substitution and 505. Right now we're gonna use 505, or in a classical music it's called secondary dominant. What it is? If we have any ultra dominant chord, or actually non altered as well, but right now we've got an altered because E will resolve to the A and minor chord and always when you go as a 5 chord uh, resolution to 1 minor it better use ultra dominant chord. Well, so if we've got E ultra dominant chord here, we can substitute that chord with another ultra dominant chord up a fifth from our E. So the fifth of E will be B. So right now uh, with or instead our E ultra dominant chord we can use B ultra dominant chord. Well, I'll use sharp 9 chord here, or we may use just a sharp 5 chord. You know, um, so many possibilities. And uh, as far as we know, that a little concept that we figure over our E ultra dominant uh, chord, that if we've got ultra dominant with a flat 9 degree, especially, uh, we can always substitute our chord with a fully diminished chord from 3rd degree, like we did over E with up a half step or flat 9 degree, flat 7th degree, and 5th degree. Now, if we've got a B altered dominant chord, we can substitute our B altered dominant chord with a fully diminished chord by using same idea as well. So, the third of B will be D sharp. So right now, we can use our D sharp fully diminished chords instead of B ultra dominant. We go down in our inversions and we have C fully diminished chord, we've got A fully diminished chord, and we've got F sharp 
equal a diminished chord. If I go and play those chords closer to our uh, substitutions over E altered dominant, you will see one uh, very interesting thing. Those diminished chords will be just the upper half higher than our diminished chords uh, substitutions over E altered dominant chord. So over E we've got major third, which is G sharp, but over B we've got A natural, right? It's a flat seventh over B. So right now we've got over our E chord from flat ninth degree, which is up a half step, it's F. But over B chord, or B altered dominant chord, we also have got an F sharp. It's the chord from fifth degree. We've got a chord from flat seventh degree over E, which is D dominant seventh chord. But in our B, we've got a chord from major third, which is D sharp. See, all those chords just up a half step higher than our substitutions, diminished substitutions over E altered dominant. And the last one will be uh, B dominant, uh, diminished, I'm sorry, over E ultra dominant chord, which is, uh, if we think about our E note right now, it's the chord from fifth degree. But also, uh, from thinking of B, we can play a C for the diminished chord, which is will be a diminished chord up a half step from our B, so from flat nine over B. But right now, I just think about that substitution 505, but I will use all diminished chords over E bass note. So it's gonna be a A fully diminished chord from 505 substitution. Now, G sharp fully diminished chord from just a diminished substitution over E. Now, we've got an F sharp from B or 505 substitution, diminished chord from E. Now we've got a uh, D sharp over 505, D natural diminished over just a straight ahead E ultra dominant, C diminished over B 505 substitution, and B diminished over ultra dominant. So right now, instead of use just a one ultra dominant chord, we can use two dominant chords, E dominant 7, or B dominant 7 altered, so our 505 substitution. And we can use 8 diminished substitutions, 4 diminished substitutions over E altered dominant chord, which is G sharp, F, D, B, and 4 diminished substitutions over B altered dominant chord, which is uh, present the same function as a E altered dominant chord. It's going to be A diminished, F sharp diminished, D diminished, and C. Right now I play all of them over E note as a bass. Well, it's pretty nice. So right now we've got that uh, little lick at the end. It's exactly those chords. It's F fully diminished that goes to F sharp fully diminished and resolves to A flat fully diminished or G sharp. So uh, this is all I would like to talk about uh, diminished substitutions so you understand how many different chords can we play instead altered dominant chord. Thank you for watching that video and I'll see you next time.